Hey guys, we're here for the last video on optimization, which is going to cover example two on the back of your note sheet. This uh, problem says, what is the largest possible area for a right triangle whose hypotenuse is five centimeters? And what are its dimensions? So what we're really looking for here, you can see that on two different triangles, they have the hypotenuse labeled as five centimeters. They don't have that. Um, so we're looking for the dimensions and the largest area. So we're looking for the base and the height on any triangle that's going to have a hypotenuse of 5. But we want the optimal dimensions that are going to maximize the area because we're looking for largest possible area. So if we're going to maximize area, we should probably write an area equation. And the area equation for a triangle is simple. It's just uh, one-half base times height. Now, what's hard about this is we can't take a derivative right here because we have these two different variables. It's going to be difficult. When we do a prime, or the derivative of A, we either do the derivative of A with respect to B or we do the derivative of A with respect to H. So my side work before I get started here is actually going to be creating a relationship between B and H so that I can solve for one variable in terms of the other. And the simplest way to do that is going to be the Pythagorean theorem. So if I write the equation B squared plus h squared equals 5 squared, what I can do is solve either for b or h. In this video, I'm just going to solve for h. So that would give me h squared equals, this would be 25, and moving the b squared over, minus b squared. And then if I square root both sides to solve for h, I would have h equals plus or minus this square root, but a negative height in the context of this problem wouldn't make sense, so I'll throw it out and just say the square root of 25 minus b squared. Now that I have h in terms of b, I can take that information back to my area equation and write area all in terms of b. So I'm going to have 1 half b, but where the h was, I'm now going to substitute the square root of 25 minus b squared. And now, since I want to maximize that area, I'm going to have to find the derivative and set it equal to zero. Now, before I do that, two things are going through my head. The first thing is, I don't have a derivative formula for square root. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite the area as half b times quantity 25 minus b squared raised to the one-half power. Next. I'm looking at this as a product rule before I even get started. I'm looking at the 1 half b as my u and the 25 minus b squared raised to the half as my v. So using the product rule, I'm going to take the derivative. It's going to get a little messy, but we'll keep things straight. So using the product rule, I have a prime equals the first, that's 1 half b, times the derivative of the second which is going to require me to use the chain rule. So that will be 1 half times 25 minus b squared to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside here, which is going to be negative 2b. So this is first, this all right here is the chain rule, which is the derivative of the second plus the second, 25 minus b squared to the half, times the derivative of the first. And the derivative of half b is just 1 half. So I'm going to clean this up as best I can and then set it equal to 0. So first let me clean it up. What I'm noticing here with all of this, if I look at all of this, I know that, for instance, this half multiplied to this negative 2 would be negative 1. So I can cancel out the half and cancel out this negative 2 and replace it with a negative 1. So let's do that first. So that would be negative b 
times 1 half times 25 minus b squared to the negative 1 half b. So basically all I'm doing there is getting rid of the half and the negative 2. Over here, not much to do over here. I maybe could bring the 1 half to the front times the 25 minus b squared to the half. Okay, going on a little bit further, I could take the negative b times the b and make that negative b squared. And then all of this can go to the bottom of that negative b squared because one half already has a top and bottom with the two being on the bottom. And when I have negative exponents, I can take that back down to the bottom and turn it back into a square root. So that's not so bad. And then plus this term over here, uh, again, I have the one half, so the two's on the bottom. This square root could stay on the top. So let's do square root of 25 minus b squared over 2. So that's about as clean looking as I can get it. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to set it equal to 0. So 0 equals negative b squared over 2 square root of 25 minus b squared plus the square root 25 minus b squared all over 2. Okay. Now, to solve, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this term and move it on over by adding it to both sides. And that'll be nice because it'll take my negative b squared and make it positive. So coming up here, this is going to give me positive b squared over 2 times the square root of 25 minus b squared equals the square root of 25 minus b squared all over 2. Okay, let me kind of create a divide here. Okay, cross multiplication will take me to the next step. So if I take 2 square root 25 minus b squared times 25 minus b squared, the two roots will cancel out and just give me 2 times 25 minus b squared. And then over here, 2 times b squared. I can divide both sides by 2, which will cancel those out which will give me 25 minus b squared equals b squared. I can then add b squared to both sides over here. So 25 will equal 2b squared. Divide by 2, which will give me 12.5 equals b squared. And then square root both sides. b will equal plus or minus, but again, I'm going to throw out the minus. It doesn't make sense for a base length of a triangle. So I'm just going to do the square root of 12.5. And if you take the square root of 12.5, you get 3.536 centimeters. Now, I have to prove by using a chart that indeed that does maximize my area. So on my chart, I'm going to put 3.536. Okay, I'm going to choose a value to the left, plug it into the derivative. Now, my nicest form of my derivative, I have to say, is probably this one right here. I'm going to plug it into this right before I set it to zero. That's the nicest version of my derivative. So when I plug something like a 1 into here, here's what it's going to look like. Okay, I'm going to do my alpha y equals feature. So I'm going to have negative 1 squared over 2 times the square root of 25 minus 1 squared plus, I'm going to do alpha y equals again, the square root of 25 minus 1 squared over 2. And that's giving me a positive value. So onto my chart, I'm going to put plus. Then I'm going to choose a value to the right, like 4. And I'm going to do the same thing on my calculator. To save time, you can do it. Do the same thing I did here. This is actually going to give you a negative, which you can confirm on your own. So my area is increasing and then decreasing. So I indeed have proven I have a maximum. So now it's time for my final statement. The maximum area is, I'm going to blank it for right now, since the sine 
of A prime changes from positive to negative when? Now I'm going to give the dimensions because the problem did ask for the dimensions, which would be the base and the height. Well, I already know my base. My base is 3.536 centimeters. And now I will go grab my height. The height, well, we got to go all the way back here. Remember height right here? It's the square root of 25 minus b squared. So let's go back to the calculator. Remember how we got the unrounded version of 3.536? That was the square root of 12.5. So let me store that in alpha a. Now when I go to take the square root of 25 minus alpha a squared, I've got the unrounded version of the height. And look at that. The height is the same as the base. So my height is 3. 536 centimeters. And finally, to fill in this blank for the maximum area, I'm just going to go right back here. If area equals one half base times height, and I have my base and my height, and those are both stored in A, then I'm just going to take one half times alpha A times alpha A, and there's my area, 6.25. So the maximum area is 6.25 centimeters squared or square centimeters. And I think I've answered all of the questions of the problem. Optimization. It's a lot of algebra and a little bit of calculus. Thanks for watching.